Hi, I'm Jane Farnham of Great British Speakers, and I'm here today chatting to the motivational and inspiring Shola Kay. Hi, Shola. It's so great to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Jane. Really good to be here. So if I said you are probably the one speaker we have with the widest range of life experiences, we know it would be a total understatement. So tell us a little bit about your life pre-speaking. Yes, Jane. Well, I started out as uh, working in the tech world as a consultant. And I was a very quiet person, quite timid, a bit of an introvert. And so early on, um, basically, I realized that kind of I was I needed to speak up more I needed to find my voice and so that came out in a couple of roles where um, in one role I was told you need to just shape up quickly otherwise you're out and managed to turn that around another one I was there for six months and literally at the end of six months they said Shola sorry uh, you're too quiet we need you to leave and um, I then realized at that point that there wasn't much empathy in both of those workplaces so later on came back to speak about it but then after that I ended up um, sort of fulfilling a childhood dream became I became a, a professional singer for a few years and um, sang internationally which is brilliant but then just kind of get kept getting tugged back into wanting to inspire, motivate people to speak about communication and also, you know, speak about my experiences that I'd had in the workplace, which is where, you know, I've sort of come full circle now and back doing that as a, a, as a living, as a full-time speaker. So how did the speaking start? Uh, well, I, I just had this um, urge to want to tell my story. I did a lot of training on um, communication as well. So I was going into organizations, specifically working with women quite frequently, um, who needed to speak up more in their roles. And so from there, I it just I kind of get got tugged into being more of a keynoter and keynoting whether it, it was at women's events, diversity and inclusion, leadership, um, mainly talking about empathy, communication skills and inclusive leadership. Um, as well as diversity, equity and inclusion. So it just kind of, uh, it, it was interesting because I just kind of get, kept getting tugged into it. And I really love speaking. It's just such a wonderful opportunity to, to change lives and, and um, make an impact. So you've, uh, given your background, which is quite diverse, I, you've already mentioned some of the hot topics, uh, the speaker topics that we get asked for. So tell us a little bit about the, the main ones that you discuss and how you can bring them all in. Mm. Well, the, the main topic I'm, I'm speaking on at the moment is empathy in the workplace. And empathy is such an important topic right now. And you, every single day I've got a Google alert and there's something in Fast Company, in Harvard Business Review, in um, uh, all those sort of magazines, Forbes, talking about how empathy is the new superpower. And the reason it's so important is because it touches on leadership touches on diversity, equity and inclusion, because if uh, managers and cultures are more empathetic, people feel more included and more of a sense of belonging and more engagement. Um, it's also important, as I say, in leadership, because often it comes from the top down, having this culture of empathy. Um, and so part of that is also inclusive leadership, which is another hot topic right now. I get a lot of organizations coming to me saying, well, we understand that the, the modern workplace is different than it used to be. And top down leadership is not working anymore. People have been through so much over the last couple of years that they need leaders who will understand and who they want to follow because that leader is, is, um, is charismatic, that leader is caring, that leader is understanding rather than that leader is my boss and I have to say, you know, do what they say. So um, there's a lot of organizational change around, well, what is a modern leader? How do we inspire our leaders to be different? So empathy comes into that. Also other skills like um, being a leader coach, learning agility. And these are all topics that I touch on in particular keynotes. Well, yes, yeah, seems very uh, hot right now. Uh, so excellent that you're covering that. Now, one of the most asked for requirements from any booking is uh, usually for us tangible takeaway benefits after the main event. So, you know, obviously you give fantastic talks, but what type of mindset change do you like to leave audiences with? Yeah, that's a really good question, because I think uh, our job as speakers is, of course, to raise awareness but then you want people to walk out feeling that they're, they're going to do things differently or that they're going to research a topic or they're going to change. 
And one of the things that I particularly love to do, I have a sort of scientific background. So my early days were spent as a, in chemistry and chemistry is all about having formulas. It's like recipes, isn't it? You know, add this and this and you get that. So one of the things that I love to do in my talks is give people frameworks and little formulas for communication so that they go back with a step-by-step, -step, oh, you know, I need to have this empathetic conversation. How do I do that? Oh yeah, Shola gave me that three-step framework. I can apply it. And um, one of the things that I really love to do, especially with the empathy keynote, is give people a PDF leave behind, which has a kind of high-level summary of some of the topics that we talk about in the keynote, and also has these step-by-step step -step sort of formulas written out so people can refer to them. So um, one of the PDFs is called the 30-day empathy plan and it has this sort of high level summary and it also has a table that people can follow and just tick every day. Did I have that conversation where I was curious? Was I listening today? Who am I planning to communicate with over these 30 days to try and transform our relationships? And um, I've been privileged with some of the organizations where they've actually called me back or we've had webinars or conversations after the keynote where I've actually got to talk to people who have been implementing the 30-day plan and heard firsthand from them what a difference in how transformational it's been for them in terms of their relationships, the way they think of themselves, how much power they feel that they now have in their relationships to, to listen, to be more empathetic. So I, I'm really privileged to, to kind of get to come back sometimes and hear those stories from people. Well, that's lovely. Now, is there an actual example that you can give where you've spoken and the organisation has implemented your concept and it's leveraged real change, but, a, you know, a real life working example? Yes. Well, one of the organisations that I did a keynote for in the States that last year, um, we actually put into place this 30 day um, empathy plan. And then as a result of that, because they were changing one of their um, their corporate values, for, I don't know what it was from, but they wanted to have empathy as a value. So I came in as a keynote to kind of celebrate this changing of the corporate value. And so then they wanted to implement this 30-day empathy plan, which they did with managers and their teams. And so they um, came back to me probably a couple of months later, and they they said that they had surveyed their um, their population and uh, employee population and they had uh, sort of overwhelmingly said that they they felt that they were able to live and breathe empathy as a a skill and as a value as a result of this 30-day plan and hearing the keynote so that was really gratifying to hear yeah excellent a real takeaway so tell me finally what gives you the most buzz Shola about speaking you know what it's it's the ability to make a change in people's lives and one of the things that I always do because in a keynote of course it's mainly me talking to them and I tend to be very interactive so I if it's online I'll get people to put in the chat so I can hear their opinions as well during the keynotes but I typically ask people to reach out to me and connect with me on LinkedIn and that's where I really hear the stories of the impact so people have said that not only in the workplace have they had results, but they'll have a, one, one guy said, oh, I, I can't wait to get home tonight. My wife and I need to have a chat. Our relationship has been a bit rocky, but with these frameworks that you've just shared with me, I'm really feeling buoyed up and courageous enough to have this conversation. So when I hear that sort of thing, or a mother saying that they talk to their teenage son and because they were empathetic, things just completely shifted. Those are the impacts for me that just make me think, oh, I'm so happy to be a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and a great speaker you are too. I know we've had a couple of engagements this year and that both of our clients have been absolutely overwhelmed uh, by the response from your talks. Shola, it's been a real pleasure chatting to you today. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to book Shola to make a difference to your business and your event, then simply contact me or Steve at Great British Speakers on 01753 439 289 or bookings at greatbritishtalent.com. Thanks very much, Jane.